Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of This Week in the World of Football. This is episode number 295 for May 9th, 2023. I'm your host, Randy Snow. On this week's show, 81 new players were selected in the CFL draft, and awards were handed out in the XFL. Speaking of the XFL, in this week's history lesson, we tell the story of the 2001 XFL championship game. But I'm not here by myself. Across the table from me, as always, is my son Adam. Employee of the month. Uh... (laughs) Not from this podcast. Not from this podcast. (laughs) Randy would never, never in his life would he give me this award. I could barely get kid of the week. So, but, but you, you got it at the factory where you work. Yeah, I'm I'm shocked that your sister did not get it. No, she should be uh, number one. She is a hard worker. I I complained and bugged my bosses for months, and it finally paid off. You didn't campaign for this. I campaigned for you. I do it jokingly because I think that recognition is just. I mean. It's what it is. All you get's a parking spot. So I got a parking spot now. Big deal. So so this was, was a let's just shut him up and give him this award. No, no, it's making me worse because now I want to be the first person to go back to back months with an employee of the month. Well, that's a that's a goal to shoot for. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> we come to you each week from the fabulous World of Football Man Cave, located right here in the center of the football world, Kalamazoo, Michigan. We're here to promote the game of football in all its many forms, past, present, and future. Our goal is to educate, inform, and entertain our listeners with the glorious buffet that is the world of football. All this while keeping a close eye on the rich history of the game. Thanks for checking out our podcast. We'd love to get your feedback on one of our many platforms. Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music so you can simply ask your Alexa device to play the World of Football podcast. You can also find our podcast in its full audio form on our YouTube channel. That would be YouTube slash at the World of Football, or, I'm sorry, as well as other selected videos. That, that's a new thing, so I kind of fall yeah. over that. Okay, uh, so let's begin today's show with Adam and the World of Football scoreboard. That's right. This week on the World of Football scoreboard, we have 16 games for everybody this week, starting with the USFL Week 4. There was a doubleheader on Saturday, which saw the Houston Gamblers defeat the Philadelphia Stars 41-14. to That's right, the Gamblers. Good for them. Houston quarterback Kenji Bahar completed 15 passes for 230 yards and two touchdowns, while running back Mark Thompson ran the ball 13 times for 134 yards and three touchdowns. For Philadelphia, quarterback Case Cookus completed 24 passes for 189 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Yeah, I don't know if I saw any of this game. What was I doing on Saturday? I don't recall. You were were watching the Derby, but uh, that's a fitting transition because the Derby... Uh, the Kentucky Derby led into the second of the doubleheader for the USFL into that Memphis Showboats Michigan Panthers game, which supposedly uh, I saw an article. It's not in our rundown, but uh, supposedly that bump from the uh, the Kentucky Derby gave the USFL its biggest bump in rating since oh, really? week because one. People were watching the yeah. Derby and then they just stayed to watch yeah. the USFL. So apparently there was enough hangover. I know you were joking because we you caught the end of the Derby and you're like, oh look at that! They actually got a little lead into the USFL, they got a countdown clock. Yeah, they and, did. That's and right. Maybe enough people, you know, either left their TVs on too long or they were actually <laughs> curious to check it out. But if they did, they got to see the Memphis Showboats get their first win as a new franchise in the new USFL over our beloved Michigan Panthers, who have now dropped two straight. Yep. Uh, Memphis quarterback Cole Kelly completed 15 passes for 151 yards and no touchdowns. While Michigan quarterbacks, that's right, plural, they've been playing two guys, Josh Love and Carson Strong combined to complete 19 passes for 134 yards, a touchdown and two interceptions between the both of them. Yeah, you didn't mention the score. It was 29 to 10. Oh, my bad, yes. Uh, It's because I was embarrassed for our Michigan (laughs) Panthers. 29 to 10, the showboats took that game. The the Panthers looked so good in their first two road games. Fantastic. And they come home for two games, and they look like crap. I don't know what's going on. The Lions on. curse is so real it's oh, rubbed man. off on the Panthers. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I can't explain. It. I mean, clearly the showboats, you know, 0-3, big chip on their shoulder. We had to talked about the last, you know, last week about how um the coach for the showboats, who uh great now I'm blanking on his name for a second week in a row. I can't I could say his name <laughs> off air. Um I can picture Todd Haley. Mm-hmm. Uh, there we go. Todd Haley, the coach of the showboats. 
had a couple of incidences after the last couple of games with the opposing coaches because he either had the score run up on him or the other team did something he didn't like that he didn't think was very sportsmanlike. But so they've been playing with a chip on their shoulder. They came in, they kicked the Panthers' butts. I don't know what the Panthers have been doing. They got a great defense, but for whatever reason, that offense just can't do anything now. Uh, I mean, Josh Love after winning uh, Player of the Week, Week One, yeah, uh, hasn't really yes, amounted much yes. since. So, and what's happened to uh, uh, running back uh, Corbin? Uh, uh, yes, uh, Reggie Corbin. Reggie Corbin. I mean, what's happened to him? He had like maybe one, one or two good runs, uh, but other than that. Uh, yeah, they, they, they stop him. Yeah, they, you know, not using him right, or he's just not getting the ball enough. I mean, you even bought a T-shirt saying "Give him the ball." Yeah. And so yeah, after after that game where yeah. he had such a great, uh, you know, a great outing, uh, when we went to the game the next week, there was a T-shirt with him on there yeah. and it said "Give me the ball," and I, I bought one. But yeah, so we'll see if the Panthers can turn it around. Uh, I, hope so. I hope so. Yep. All right, then on Sunday, there was another doubleheader, uh, which saw the New Orleans Breakers defeat the New Jersey Generals 20-17. to This keeps the Breakers undefeated, the lone unbeaten team, mind you, at 4-0. Breakers quarterback McLeod Bethel-Thompson uh, completed 26 passes for 279 yards and no touchdowns, while running back Wes Hills ran the ball 26 times for 88 yards and two touchdowns. For the Generals, quarterback DeAndre Johnson completed seven passes for 113 yards and a touchdown. He also ran the ball five times for 38 yards. Um, the Breakers, your team that you predicted would go and win the USFL championship this year, has been living up to that. Uh, so far, yeah. So far. McLeod Bethel Thompson, the great cup-winning qu- quarterback, coming down. It's so weird saying his name in these yeah. uh, scores here. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm happy for him. I think it's cool that he's come down and done this, but um, it's just so weird. I mean, he, he is clearly the mo- the best quarterback in the league. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, so far, I mean, they they are living up to the uh, uh, what the I Randy thought. Snow prediction. Well, what I what I thought they would be, you know, with, with an experienced quarterback. I didn't. They know. are who you thought they were. <laughs> yeah, somebody pointed pointed out in one of our comments that Wes Hills also played up in the CFL too. Oh. So they're both uh, uh, CFL. Well, thank you, uh, commenters. Former CFL players. Interesting. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're just. It it's hard to root against them. Now I watched the end of this game, uh-huh. and in, when I w- when I caught the tail end, it was seventeen seventeen. So, you know, close game. And then um, the Breakers kicked a field goal in 2017, and they actually had to hold off um, the Generals from scoring because uh, uh, they, had, they had two drives. You know, they stopped them on one drive, and then they got the ball back, and then they couldn't do anything, so they had to punt, and they stopped them again. So, um, yeah, good, good defense at the end yeah. of the game. Yeah, and the generals. I mean, despite them being two and two now, I I think the generals have been. You know, they've looked good. They've looked good. Yes, so they have. I mean, it's still early in the year. You know, anything can happen. I think a lot of these teams have shown flashes of being pretty good. It's just you know, a game comes down to a, a series or a couple of plays that just it, it's got to go your way, or you know, you end up losing the game, and it's you know a big difference between a win and a loss. Mm-mm. All right, and finally, the uh, defending champion Birmingham Stallions defeated the Pittsburgh Maulers twenty four to twenty. Uh, Stallions quarterback Alex Magoo completed 17 passes for 157 yards and a touchdown. Uh, he also ran the ball 10 times for 48 yards and another touchdown on top of that. Yep. For the Maulers, quarterback Troy Williams completed 21 passes for 217 yards and no touchdowns. He also ran the ball seven times for 63 yards and a touchdown. There's, there's a pattern going on here with these quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of great running quarterbacks in this league. Mm-hmm. They, they're very dynamic. And, you know, so they, they put up, you know, not great looking passing numbers, but they right. affect the game just by their running game. Right. I know Mag- uh, Magoo. I saw his touchdown uh, where he like got to the pylon and he had to reach out and smack the pylon with the football to get in there. Yep. So that was a pretty good highlight. I, you know, I think the USFL has been. Uh, we talked about it. it. Took the XFL a little bit to seem like it was a little more of a balanced, even though a lot of the team records were kind of. Um, one-sided. Of, one-sided in certain in spots. But I feel like it, it, eventually that competition and the, the level of play all kind of became very well balanced, despite like the Vipers being, you know, one and eight at a, a point or whatever. But you could tell like there was there was fight and that they had a shot at certain things and the ball just wouldn't go their way. And I feel the same thing is happening in this, where I think the Maulers are a better team than their one and three record indicate. Um so, you know, this is a lead, you know, we're four weeks in. Hey, give it a couple more weeks, and who knows where these standings could be. Yeah. Uh, before we move on, I, I wanted to mention something. I posted this on our Twitter feed, I believe, uh, either Twitter or Facebook. But there was a guy that went to 
uh, four USFL games in two days. So I'm thinking he was at Detroit for two games and he was in Canton for two games. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, just, just some random fan. And he's like, yeah, did did four games in two days, you know, and we're talking about, oh, yeah, we did a double header. Well, this guy did a double, double header. A double, double. <laughs> and so it's uh, he's making us look bad, but oh, well, <laughs> good for him. Hey, that's a lot of football. That's in two a days. lot of football. I mean, we we were exhausted after just yes, one, and that yes, I, and his probably had to involve flying because I, I would imagine you're going from Detroit to wherever they played this Canton. last weekend in, in Canton. Uh, yeah, that's all. Well, that's a not that far. We could have done that way. Yeah. man, we suck. <laughs> we suck real bad. Yeah, we could have done. We're that. We're just lazy. But could have done that. But I don't know where he's from. I don't know if he's from Canton or from Detroit. Yeah, but maybe he's in the or maybe exactly in the middle. Of it. it makes it so much easier for him. I don't know. Toledo. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows. All right, anyway, we're going to move on to the Indoor Football League. It was week eight there. We had a game on Friday which saw the Massachusetts Pirates squeak by the Green Bay Blizzard 50-49. to And on Saturday, we had a quadruple header, which started with Quad City, <laughs> the Steam Wheelers defeating the Iowa Barnstormers 60-34, to keeping the Iowa Barnstormers at 0-6. You know, winless on the season. We're, yeah. we're going to... Are we doing standings later? Uh, Not this week. Okay. Yeah, we might get into standings here pretty soon. Standings here soon. we get a little soon. closer towards the end of the right. season. All right. Then the Sioux Falls Storm defeated the Tulsa Oilers 52-35. to The Bay Area Panthers came out on top over the Vegas Nighthawks 62-44. to The Northern Arizona Wranglers, the defending champs, defeated the Tucson Sugar Skulls 31-21 to in that Arizona in-state rivalry. Then on Sunday, the Frisco Fighters at 6-0 defeated the Duke City Gladiators in embarrassing fashion, 67-15. <laughs> wow, yeah, I don't even think the Gladiators had a point going in halftime if I uh, I saw think that you're right, right on that. I think I did see that it was they hadn't scored it in the first half. And then on by this week, because apparently these two teams couldn't have played a game, <laughs> the San Diego Strike Force and the Arizona Rattlers. And with that, we're going to go throw it over to Randy, who's going to cover week 10 of Champions Indoor Football. Yes, uh, CIF action, uh, three games, actually, no, four games on Saturday. You had the Salina Liberty defeating the Southwest Kansas Storm 52-31. to It was the Omaha Beef improving to 8-0 as they defeated the Sioux City Bandits barely 48-45. to Billings Outlaws over the Topeka Tropics. 37 to 15, and that sends Topeka with an 0 and 8 record now on the season. And finally, the Gillette Mustangs over the Rapid City Marshals by the score of 77 to 28. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Going on to finally National Arena League scores. It was week five in the NAL. The West, Tex- West Texas Warbirds defeated the Albany Empire 41 to 38. And that was the Warbirds' first win of the season. Hey, hey, hey. And, uh, yeah, I I don't know if it was really their first win or just uh, the Albany Empire sinking lower into... Oh, come on. Let's own. not tarnish a win for the Warbirds. No, but I mean, but I'm saying... But the, the, the Empire, I mean... The Empire are falling apart, are, it seems. From the, oh, I'd say from the inside out. Yeah, whatever. They're, they're, bad things are happening there, and uh, uh, it's, it's sad to see. But anyway, uh, that was the only game on Saturday in the NAL. And on Sunday, they had one game... The San Antonio Gunslingers improved to 4-0, and the only undefeated team in the NAL, by defeating the Fayetteville Mustangs 40-27. to And on by in the NAL this week were the Orlando Predators, Jacksonville Sharks, and Carolina Crobo- <laughs> Cobras. <laughs> Crowbars? <laughs> Carolina Cobras. That'd be a heck of a team name, though. Yeah. Are you going to go to the Crowbars game tonight? <laughs> oh, you know it, man. And that's it for this week's World of Football scoreboard. And, uh, you know, we before we kind of wrap up, not that this is going to be part of the scoreboard, you know, for a while behind the scenes, I've been pulling for us to talk about the LFA, the uh, uh, Football Americano League down there in Mexico. All right. You got some information? Well, I'm not saying information. I just want to say for a minute, though, uh, we watched a little bit of a game on YouTube um, Mm -hmm. with the full Mexican broadcast. You Uh, didn't realize that they were on uh, YouTube. I didn't really, yeah. I I guess I hadn't realized they were on YouTube, but I I, I wanted to throw that out there. I know they're getting close to their season being done. Okay, well, maybe I've been wanting to run... I think we're going to cover them for their championship weekend at least uh, and start adding them next year to the rundown. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while. I I, I follow it on Instagram, and uh, it's just cool, you know, this other league down in Mexico that's been around for a few years. I think... uh, you know, we are the world of football, gosh darn it. They should be included. I'm sure there's other leagues across the the, the world that we haven't added to our rundown that, uh, yeah. you know, maybe we need to start incorporating at some point. That's true. That's true. Yep, we can do that. 
But uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there because I, I thought it was a great little quality broadcast. You know, I can't, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, I didn't see an option to see American sub, you know, English subtitles. Yeah. But we've all seen football. We know how the game is played, and you don't right. need to understand the play by play guys to see, you know, you can hey, watch what a with, great catch. You can what watch a great it with throw. the sound off. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, pretty much. But I just wanted to throw that shout out real quick. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to some NFL news this week. Um, in an uplifting story, Bears quarterback Justin Fields graduated from Ohio State last Sunday with a degree in consumer and family financial services. Congratulations to him. Yeah. So many players uh, do not get their degrees, or it's many years later. But I think it's great that he, you know, took the time to, what's he been in the league, two years now? Yeah, I think this will be his third year coming up. Okay, so uh, it took him a couple of years, but, you know, I don't know how many credits he needed to get or, or you know, if he went to night school or, you know, online, whatever. Uh, that I don't know, but I just think that's awesome that he did that. You know, I'm sure his his family appreciates that. I don't know if his mom is still around, but, you know, parents always appreciate that yeah. sort of thing. And then uh, you well, just found this well, story. Well, hold on. I'm, I didn't get to talk about Justin <laughs> okay. Fields. Look, despite right. him being a Chicago Bear player and us being Lions yep. fans, yep. as much as we are supposed to hate his guts for not being a, on the Bears. Not a fan on the field, but <laughs> but off the in the classroom, field. big fan. Good. I, uh, <laughs> it is cool to see. It's good for him. Like, this is the kind of thing that transcends football. Whether right. or not he actually uses this degree for that purpose or if it's just the fact that it's you know, he made a promise to go back and get that degree, even if he made it in the NFL and is a millionaire, which he is now. Like, good for him for finding the time to do it, for putting in the work. I know there's a lot of former players that go back, you know, uh, after they've retired, you know, a couple years after they retired. I think Calvin went back and got his degree mm-hmm. after he retired from Detroit. Um, so it doesn't matter how long you're in the league, you know, you've been in the league two years, or if you graduate, you know, 10 years into your career in the NFL, you know, uh, it's an accomplishment still that should be recognized and applauded. Well, I think uh, any, once you get into the NFL, your time is totally consumed with oh, right. learning you know, your especially job. Especially being and, the rookie franchise quarterback yes. for the Chicago. That's got to be a lot on your yes. plate already. Right. And on top of it, you went back to school. You went back to Ohio State and got that degree. Whether or not that was online or not, who knows. But regardless, but that's he okay. ended up with a diploma. He was there at the stadium. I think he posted yeah. a picture of being yeah, there. So a picture of him in a cap and gown with his diploma. It looked like yep. uh, they had a big graduation ceremony that day with the yeah, you know, the rest of the class of 2023. Yep. So, so good for you, Justin. Congratulations. That is awesome. Yes. And then the, then the flip side is a story you just found yeah. uh, just before we started recording. Saints Hall of Famer, or Hall, I'm sorry, Hall of Fame linebacker Ricky Jackson received a college degree from Pittsburgh at the age of 65. And again, you are never too old <laughs> no, to no, go back not. and uh, accomplish that. And I think both of his parents have passed, so he did say that his mom and dad would both be proud yep. that he went and did this. Yep. So again, it doesn't matter. He accomplished it. It took right. him you know, into his 60s to do it. But hey, everybody's different. Yeah. So yeah. But congratulations I... to him. You know, He looks good in a cap and gown. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the two ends of the spectrum. You've got Young Justin Fields getting his, you know, two years after he you know, joins the NFL. Uh, Hall of Famer going back to the age of 65 and finishing his degree. So uh, they should both be applauded. Uh, that's that's the two ends of the spectrum right yeah. there. Uh, this really surprised me. Rams coach Sean McVay gets a statue at the Cradle of Coaches Plaza at the University of Miami of Ohio. I've been to this thing. Yes, you have. To see some of these. I have my picture taken with a lot of them. And, and they, yeah, they've added at least two since I was there several years ago. Um, but uh, McVeigh attended the school at Oxford, uh, Ohio, and was a wide receiver on the football team from 2004 to 2007. He graduated from Miami of Ohio in 2008. Um, Other people, you know, they they have this cradle of coaches plaza where they have life-size statues of all the guys that started at the school somehow. Either you were either a student there or you're a coach or an assistant coach there, and you went on to greatness uh, from there, and they put up a statue of you. Woody Hayes has a statue there. Bo Schembechler, uh, Jim Harbaugh, Carm Koza. Oh, gosh, uh, there's like about a dozen guys now. Um, right. But, yeah, I did an article on this many years ago. It, it's fascinating to go there and see these statues and realize all these guys from... I, Red Blake, uh, the Army coach. Uh, was there also. So, I mean, they all got their start at this little school in Oxford, Ohio, and they all went on to win Super Bowls, win national championships, uh, you name it. Uh, and they, so they, they call this plaza the Cradle of Coaches, and it's, it's awesome. And you just, it's, it's so weird to think they all came from this one school. 
you know, it's a Mac school. Right. Kalamazoo plays them every year. So that's that's, that's one place I'll have to go with you sometime. Yeah, I would I throw it up mind, on the YouTube channel. I wouldn't mind doing a return trip. And it's it's an awesome uh, place to go visit. Well, let's see. May 11th, this Thursday, is the release date for the 2023 NFL schedule. They were teasing it for the last couple of days. Uh, even when even after they came out and said it was going to be the 11th, they said, well, it might not be the 11th, and we're, we're not sure, and this and that. Supposedly, that's when it's coming out. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know they're going to have a huge right. you know, primetime special on the NFL Network, yeah, and they're going to talk about it for hours and hours. So if that's the case, that means that schedule is done right now. Like, they right. pro- they probably finished it, you know, today. Like they, well, Last year, like they said it was like a day or two, like hours before they actually right, released yeah. it, that they actually had it finalized. So... There's so, somewhere, you know, it's people in a room with all the, you know, the whiteboard filled out with all the different stuff. So, um, I know we got a thing coming up about a, a little bit of a leak, and I'm sure we're going to slowly get more leaks over the next right. couple of days. Yeah, so. between today and tomorrow, they're supposed to leak a lot of the games, the, yeah. all of the uh, European games yeah. and uh, some of the big matchups for the season, maybe Thanksgiving games or whatever. And, and then we'll cover it all next week for yep. sure. That'll so probably those, be our top story. Yeah, those will all, those will all come out well, before actually, the actual XFL schedule. championships next week, too, so never mind. It won't be the top story, probably. <laughs> Oh, what what do we cover? The schedule or the XFL championship game? Hmm. Why not both? Uh, yeah, we'll probably do, we'll end up doing both. And uh, going along with this, the NFL is reportedly planning to have their first Monday triple header in league history on Christmas Day this year. And this is coming from NBC Sports. So I assume that's going to be a one o'clock game, a four o'clock game, and a eight o'clock game. Probably that's what on, we were kind of thinking on the ESPN. Or the Monday first ever, the first ever Monday triple header. Like, man, I, I can't believe Christmas is on a Monday this year. So we're gonna have all that football on Christmas Eve. Well, doesn't the NBA do a lot of stuff on Christmas Day? They also? do too. That's what. Uh, so you're gonna have your fill of sports on that Christmas Day now. How mad is the NBA going to be that the NFL is going to hone in on that? Like the NFL's kind of stayed away from Christmas Day, other than like the one, uh, one game during the day, like they did that Saints, uh, mm-hmm. where, where uh, Alvin Kamara had the six touchdown game. So I guess they don't like the uh, NBA getting more attention than they are on, on a holiday. You're the NFL. You're the biggest thing in <laughs> sports. Why are you afraid? All right, that's it for uh, NFL news. Uh, we do have some CFL draft news. Uh, the Ottawa Red Blacks had the very first pick of the draft, and uh, first overall they selected offensive lineman Dante Bull from Fresno State. Um, you don't realize this, but you know the Canadian draft is just for kids who are Canadian citizens, so most of them play for Canadian colleges. But I've got a few of them listed here that actually went to uh, college here in the states. So the very first overall pick was a guy from Fresno State. With the fifth pick in the draft, the Montreal Alouettes selected linebacker Jonathan Sutherland, who played at Penn State this past year. And, you know, a few years ago, we had a guy from Western Michigan get picked by the Calgary Stampeders. Sutherland, uh, no no relation to our uh, brother-in-law? Well, your brother-in-law, my son-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. In the sixth round, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders selected offensive lineman. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right. City Sow? S-I-D-Y-S-O-W. Could be so. I mean, city so, sidey so. I don't know, but he went to Eastern Michigan University, right down the road here from us. Uh, so congratulations to him. And in the seventh round, the Montreal Alouettes selected running back Chase Brown from Illinois, and he was also selected by the Cincinnati Bengals this year. So, wow, so within a few days, he got selected in two different drafts. Hey, good for him. When's the last yeah. time that's happened? I don't know. But I mean, if you're the come on, if you're the Alouettes, don't you know? He's going to probably go to the NFL, unless unless Maybe. he did say, you know, I'd rather go back and play up in Canada. Well, you know, a lot of times they they want to get these guys uh, uh, conditional rights so that, you know, if something uh, happens in, in you know, a couple of years down the road and he maybe, you know, uh, gets cut by the NFL, uh, an NFL team or whatever, uh, if he's available, they have his rights. So they have first, you know, first dibs on trying to sign him. That's so a, I mean that's, that's a fair that's argument. What it, okay. Yeah, that's what it is. They're, they just you know they know they want these Canadian kids that they're good and they want them on their team. If it works out, great. If not, you know, hey, yeah. they uh, they at least have their rights. And let's see. Oh, and uh, the last note I have here: there were no quarterbacks selected. Interesting. Every year I look at this because they always get their quarterbacks from the, from the U.S. Uh, and I would think that Canadian quarterbacks would 
would have a leg up. You know, they've pl been playing the game in high school and college, right. but they'll bring in a, a quarterback from the U.S. that's never played uh, CFL football before, and uh, that's that's who they get. But it just it doesn't make any sense. It is a weird strategy. You know, who are the two guys uh, last year that were both uh, Canadian citizens that were leading their teams? There were two of them, and I can't uh. remember either guy's name right now. But that, that's unusual that, that two teams had, you know, uh, Canadian-born quarterbacks leading their teams, and they were doing great, too. It wasn't Nathan uh, Rourke, was it? Well, uh, was it? Was he one of them? I don't think so. I, I kind of think it was. Uh, but anyway, it's just it yeah. just floors me that quarterbacks are not uh, really... See, this uh, is a great situation where uh, we had the brother-in-law sitting here as the third member of the podcast, but all he does is fact-check over in the corner while we uh, record. It'd be great to turn to him and say, hey, fact-check that, will you? <laughs> And then he can chime in every once in a while with a, a quip. So we'll see. Okay, dead, dead air. Come on, okay. move it on. All right, um, then we're going to move on to XFL news. Uh, the XFL came out with uh, a bunch of their awards for the season. Right, because uh, they took a week off for some reason. Like, yeah, they what a weird decision. That. It didn't need to do that. But anyway, uh, DC quarterback uh, Jordan Ta'amu was named the XFL Offensive Player of the Year. No real, real surprise there. Uh, St. Louis quarterback A.J. McCarron wins the XFL MVP award, even though his team didn't make the playoffs. Um, uh, I was going to let you read this next one, but, but I'll do it. Uh, Vipers linebacker Pita Tama Epenu. Well, that's close. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a long last name. He won Defensive Player of the Year, so somebody on your Vipers team yeah, uh, won an award. Another team that didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, St. Louis wide receiver Darius Shepard was named Special Teams Player of the Year. Yeah. Didn't he have the lone uh, kickoff return for a touchdown this year? He might have. Yes, I think you're right. And uh, Coach of the Year was Reggie Barlow, the coach of the D.C. Defenders. Oh, yeah, that, he, that goes without saying. It, yeah. They got the best record, what, 9-1? and one and, Yeah. Um, Ten and one now after winning a playoff game. Yeah, I mean, shoot. Uh, I mean, all these guys are very deserving of yep. awards. You know, uh, Jordan uh, Ta'amu. You know, we, we've been big fans of him since he yep. burst on the scene there in the 2020, 2020 mm -hmm. uh, XFL. Yep. Uh, A.J. McCarron, you know, it was great seeing him kind of have a comeback, you know. Yeah, he had some monster games this yeah. year. And, and uh, you know, others that, that weren't that good. But, uh, boy, he, he he certainly put out the highlights this year for mm -hmm. the XFL. And, uh, uh, oh, there was, there was something else. They... The um, the XFL put out a, um, a press release about other awards. Not in, these were the individual awards, and then there were team awards. And I didn't want to uh, go through those, but right. they're on our uh, Twitter feed. Uh, you can find that a, a post from the XFL. Yeah, but hey, good good for these guys. Uh, yeah. It's great. You know, also especially after the twenty twenty XFL season got cut short by COVID, and you know it's been twenty two years since the original XFL. I don't even remember them having. I mean, they've had some awards because um, you bring that up in your history lesson later. But um, it's just cool to see a, a lot of these guys get recognition and that, that this league seems to be kind of delivering on its promise to its guys. You know, it's very player um, player oriented. So, yeah. Well, it seems like for the last week or so, they've had all kinds of posts from the XFL talking about this player and that player have been, you know, invited to training camp with the NFL teams. So, uh, you know, like uh, Ben DiNucci, the quarterback for Seattle, he's going to Denver. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've there's been a ton of those. A slew of those posts. So good yeah. for them, like, posting those, too. Right, yeah. I mean, so people want to know. the point and is. That's these the... guys are at least getting their chance. They they put in their time in the XFL. Now they're going to get a look by the NFL. And um, so hopefully, you know, they, they might light down with a team. Yeah. And uh, good for them. Who knows? Maybe we'll have, like, uh, some guys that were, like, who were in the USFL last year who jumped to the NFL, became pro bowler. I forget how many we had, five or seven. Hmm. But how many of these XFL guys will jump to the NFL, and how many pro bowlers are we going to get? Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. It should be exciting. Yep. All right, moving on to today's birthdays for May 9th. Tackle Jake Long turns 38 uh, years old today. Played his college football at Michigan. He was the first overall pick in the 2008 NFL Draft by the Miami Dolphins. He played nine NFL seasons. He was with the Dolphins, Dolphins from 20, 2008 to 2012. He was with the St. Louis Rams from 2013 to 2014. The Atlanta Falcons in 2015. And the Minnesota Vikings in 2016. The other birthday today is guard Brad Budd. 
turned 65 years old today. He played his college football at USC, was selected in the 11th round of the 1980 NFL Draft by the Kansas City Chiefs. He played his entire seven-year career with the Chiefs from 1980 to 1986. So happy birthday, Brad Budd and Jake Long today. All right, we do have two obituaries to talk about today. Uh, this is where we take a moment and honor those who've made the world of football a better place. Our first obituary today is that of Gerald Nesbitt, a halfback in the Canadian Football League for four seasons. He has passed away at the age of 91. Nesbitt played college football at the University of Arkansas. He played for the Ottawa Rough Riders from 1958 to 1961 and won a Grey Cup title with the, key, with the team in 1960. Nesbitt was inducted into the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame in 1991 and into the University of Arkansas Sports Hall of Honor in 1999. All right, and our second and final obituary this week is that of Joe Cap, a quarterback in the NFL and the Canadian Football League, has passed away at the age of 85. Cap played college football at the University of California, Berkeley, and was selected in the 18th round of the 1959 NFL Draft by the Washington Redskins. However, he signed with the CFL's Calgary Stampeders and played for them from 1959 to 1961. He was traded then to the British Columbia Lions during the 1961 season and remained with British Columbia through 1966, winning a Grey Cup title in 1964. Cap then signed with the NFL's Minnesota Vikings, where he played from 1967 to 1969. He led that team to an appearance in Super Bowl IV, where they lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. Cap finished his playing career with the Boston Patriots in 1970. Cap was inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame in 1984. He is also a member of the British Columbia Sports Hall of Fame and British Columbia Football Hall of Fame. And that's the end of that sentence. <laughs> I thought yeah. there was more. Yeah, it, it, when I first read that, uh, you know, BC's Sports Hall of Fame, uh, I thought that was a team, but I think that's for all, everybody in British Columbia, you know, so they might induct uh, uh, tennis players or, you know, uh, golfers, whatever. So that's for all sports. And then the BC Football Hall of Fame, that's the team Hall of Fame. So uh, that's the difference between those two, as far as I understand. Yeah, uh, Joe Cap, if you may recall, uh, you remember seeing the video a few years ago of him and Angelo Mosca getting into a scuffle on stage. Yeah, uh, at, at a little a, ceremony. Yeah, Canadian football. Uh, I think it was like before the Grey Cup or something. Mm. And uh, uh, they they didn't like each other when they were players. And, and Cap tried to make amends and Moscow, you know, took offense to it. And they started taking swings. And they I think they knocked each other off that the stage. That was all and, over oh, social media. Oh, my gosh. That two was, old guys getting into yeah, a fight. Yeah, nobody probably even heard of these two guys at the time. But especially Angelo Mosca. He, he played strictly up in Canada. But... You know, uh, Joe Cap, he was down here in the States with the um, Vikings and Patriots. So uh, he people at least would know his name. Okay, um, I guess we're up to our history lesson. Uh, anything on your phone that's come over since we started talking that we need to talk about? Um, Not really. Um, the only thing I saw that might be worth just quickly mentioning, and not really, like we didn't make a full story, was that the Lions did release... Um, oh yes, that uh, the other player that was a part of the gambling uh, situation a few weeks back, yeah, Barry Hill, Stanley Barry Hill, wide receiver, uh, was uh, waived by the Lions today. Uh, he received a six game. Yeah, suspension. he was still part of the six game suspension, so he'll that's still obviously. Yeah, so three out of yeah. the four Lions players are now gone from the team. The only one they kept, well, they I think there was five. Well, the fifth one was uh, with the Redskins, oh, yeah. not the Redskins. Yeah, the Washington Football. Team. You're right. So, yeah. so the only one they kept was their first round pick from last year, who yeah. is also suspended for six games. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I was shocked. Like Barry Hill was one of those guys I'd never heard of him. But... I did not know the name at all. Yeah. So but... I, I was wondering why they kept him and didn't just get rid of him. Well, now he's gone. Yeah, so he sure is. All right. Well, so let's get into this week's history lesson. And this week we're gonna go way back to 2001 and talk about the very first XFL championship game. The 2001 XFL was owned by NBC and the World Wrestling Federation. It was filled with gimmicks, sexy cheerleaders, and wrestling personalities calling the games. They introduced the sky cam to the football world, as well as the scramble for the ball instead of a coin toss. They also allowed nicknames on the backs of the players' jerseys, like Big Daddy and, of course, He Hate Me. But for all the theatrics surrounding the actual game, the football on the field was not too bad. 
By the time the playoffs rolled around, the play on the field was actually pretty good. That was until the 5-5 San Francisco Demons upset the 8-2 Orlando Rage by the score of 26-25 in the playoffs the week before the title game. The original working title of the championship game was The Big Game at the End, but that eventually was changed to The Million Dollar Game. That's because a million dollar prize was going to be awarded to the winning team and split between the 38 active roster players and the 5 practice squad players. Each winning player received about $23,250. The losing team received nothing. The Los Angeles Extreme took on the San Francisco Demons for the league title on Saturday, April 21, 2001 at the Los Angeles Coliseum. L.A. won the game 38-6. The only score for the Demons came with just 25 seconds remaining in the game. The attendance at the game was 24,153. The L.A. Extreme was led by quarterback Tommy Maddox, who was a first-round pick out of UCLA by the Denver Broncos in the 1992 NFL Draft. He played four seasons in the NFL for the Broncos, Los Angeles Rams, and the New York Giants from 1992 to 1995. He was out of football from 96 to 99. Then he signed with the New Jersey Red Dogs of the Arena Football League in 2000. He threw for over 3,300 yards and 62 touchdowns in his lone AFL season. In the XFL championship game, Maddox completed 16 of 28 passes for 210 yards and two touchdowns. He was named the XFL Player of the Year. Maddox was then signed by the Pittsburgh Steelers and played for the team from 2001 through 2005. He was named the NFL's Comeback Player of the Year in 2002. He also won Super Bowl XL as a member of the Steelers in 2005. L.A. kicker Jose Cortez kicked four field goals in the game of 22, 34, 37, and 50 yards. Cortez went on to play in the NFL for the San Francisco 49ers, Washington Redskins, Dallas Cowboys, and Philadelphia Eagles from 2001 to 2005. For the San Francisco Demons, quarterback Mike Pulaski completed 8 of 20 passes for 74 yards and 2 interceptions. He had previously played for the CFL's Shreveport Pirates in 1995 and in the Arena Football League from 1995 to 2000 with the Miami Hooters and the Albany Firebirds. He led the Firebirds to a win over the Orlando Predators in Arena Bowl 13 in 1999. The championship game was a very one-sided affair and turned out to be the only title game ever played in the XFL until 2023. I am pretty excited about uh, the 2023 XFL championship game, but man, I remember how hyped we were for the million dollar game. Uh, <laughs> Way back my, when. The team I was rooting for, the Chicago Enforcers, were yep. in the playoffs. Yep. They lost that playoff game. Uh, and to L.A. To L.A., who would win the whole thing, but... Mm. Still, I just remember, you know, watching that game. I even found, uh, I think, a YouTube channel has got all the the game from that, you know. The entire game? The entire game, you know, two hours worth there. So I was kind of watching that for the history lesson video. And, oh, there's some gems in there, that's for sure. I, I watched a highlight package to remind myself of what happened. And, boy, there were a lot of, a lot of interceptions and fumbles. And, boy, yeah. just San Francisco just could not get it together that day. And. Yeah, like I said in in the history lesson, uh, they've only scored with twenty five seconds yeah. left, and I, I think they went for a three point conversion after that and mm. didn't make it. So, yeah. Oh hey, well. Hey, what what a, what a time though that 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 league at that point in time, yeah. man. We we were hoping for more of that league, and yeah, unfortunately, it took twenty years to get more of that league. But here we are, <laughs> about to have another championship game. Yep. Yeah, I, I wonder. Uh, how much these guys are going to make for being in the championship game. And I haven't seen anything. I'm, any sure. Talk I'm about sure if that. you, if you come across it, we should, we should talk about it. Yeah. We'll up. mention it next week. If we, if we find that because the, the players back then got 23, so I'm sure the losing team will still get paid. Well, yes, this time around. Yeah. Hopefully. All right. I'm um, upcoming events calendar this Thursday, two days from now, May 11th, the 2023 NFL schedule release. Yep. Um, I, I'm not going to be sitting there watching the whole thing. I mean, three I'll hours. wait for the alert, see what the Lions schedule looks like, figure out when they're playing the Raiders. That's the that's our big game this year because that's the only team you right. have never seen in the NFL is yeah, the Raiders person. franchise. Yep. So 
That's the game. No matter what day it is, if it's a Monday night or Thursday night, we're getting tickets. We're going to yep. build a, a thing around it, and yep. we might even have to make content out of it for this YouTube channel. That we <laughs> oh, I'm do. sure you will. But Randy's final NFL team, man, like that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I, I was close to, to that a few years ago. <laughs> had, I mean, well, had tickets and everything. Well, but... you talk about the guy who saw all four games in the right. weekend for the USFL. Well, I'm pretty sure there's people who've seen all the 32 teams. In the last ten years, it's taking you how long to see all thirty-two? Uh, since nineteen seventy-five, I've been I've been slowly uh, seeing every single team out there, and uh, it's a hope, marathon, not a sprint. Hopefully, that will come to an end this this year. The Las Vegas Raiders, Randy's yep. last team. Yep. Uh, this Saturday, May thirteenth, XFL Championship game in San Antonio between the DC Defenders and the Arlington Renegades. Friday, May 22nd, the CFL preseason begins. Uh, Thursday, June 8th, the CFL regular season begins. And uh, last on our list here is Thursday, August 3rd, the Pro Football Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio. Less between, than three months. Between the Cleveland Browns and the New York Jets. It's all coming so fast. Yeah. That's what she said. But yeah, you, don't, uh, you don't think that... Um, Aaron Rodgers or uh, Deshaun Watson are going to play in that game. Watson at all? probably not. Part of me wonders if Rodgers will just to stick it to the Packers. I'll a bet he more. will. I'll bet he'll come in for the first series. Or he'll so. play. He'll play one one series and yep. that's it. Yep. I'm wondering. I mean, traditionally though, you know, the fir- very first preseason game they usually don't play. Well, but I just I just have a weird feeling like Aaron Rodgers wants to stick it to the Packers. He's been doing right. all this other stuff he never did for the Packers in the last right. five ten years. So I don't know. I I think he'll make an appearance. He'll he'll obviously he'll be there. Yes, but, but I just I th- I think he'll. I think it's a coin flip whether he actually he'll does run the first series. I'll bet. We'll see. Maybe a three and out, and yeah, he's done for today. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. All right, uh, nothing else. No, I'm I'm shocked. I mean, we've had so, so many weeks of just jam packed shows. You know, yeah. going over an hour, and it's kind of nice to be under forty five minutes for a change. Well, let's get out of here then. Now, that's all the time we got for this week. If you learned something during this podcast about the incredible amount of diversity that exists in the world of football, then we have done our job. Visit our website at theworldoffootball.com for news, links, upcoming events, original articles, videos, and more. Our email address is info at theworldoffootball.com. Uh, let me scroll to the part of the page I need to get to. You can like The World of Football on Facebook at TWOF Kalamazoo. You can also follow our Twitter account. That's at TWOF Kalamazoo. New episodes of this podcast are posted on Tuesdays and are available on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. Don't forget it. Just ask your Alexa device to play the World of Football podcast, and you'll have us in your ear holes. Uh, You can also find our YouTube channel. Just do a search for the World of Football Kalamazoo or use the handle youtube.com slash at the World of Football for many great videos. We haven't really done any extra videos this week. It's finally been a quiet Yes, chill we week for a change. To, we needed some time off from everything. Uh, so you're you're just going to get your standard podcast and your weekly fix of the video version of the history lesson this week. Nothing crazy coming. We are, ex- well, I won't say experimenting. We're talking about putting up some a series of shorts. Mm-hmm. Um, and when those are going to come out, we will let you know. But we are yeah. in active development yep. of other weird football things. <laughs> so be on the lookout. Give us a like, subscribe, rate, review, all that stuff on the YouTube channel because every single one matters. Uh, we do appreciate the conversation in the comments, too, and keeping it civil. So thank you, guys. Let us know what you think. And please come be a part of the fun football conversations. Yeah, the, the word fun is in capital letters there. It is. Hey, look, I, we've, there's been a lot of people, like, uh, especially the arena football video has been getting a lot of mm-hmm. traction, and it's been fun seeing people commenting their favorite teams they used to have, what they right. think the league should be doing. Yep. You know. Uh, Everybody's got an opinion. People are excited about it. Yes, they, they, they just are. They just want, you know, everybody wants their team back, and we all know we can't all get our teams back. Unfortunately. But, if if the first step and only thing that can happen is getting that great league back, that's all that matters. So. Yes, we'll start with that, and then yeah. we'll fight for our team. In the yeah, then bring the Grand Rapids Rampage back. That's Absolutely. all that matters. Yep. I don't want to hear about the Birmingham Steel Dogs. We want Grand <laughs> Rapids Rampage. That's right. All right, and remember, folks, some people may love football more than we do, but nobody, and I mean nobody, loves more football. Than we do. I don't know. Didn't you see that one guy's comment in the YouTube? Uh, uh, he doesn't love more football. He's just been to more she, football. We don't know. <laughs> it was a guy. <laughs> it was a guy, Peg. <laughs> Until next time, when we'll try and do a better job 
I'm Randy Snow. And if you got that reference, uh, leave that in the comments below. <laughs> I'm Adam Snow. One of my favorite episodes. It's a great one. Married with Children. I'll at least give you that one. If you All can right. tell me. Uh, wait, did I just spoil the surprise? Yeah, I was Married with Children. It's one of our favorite shows. Yes. And we'll see you all next week.